We're still following that breaking news out of the NFL where the Colts are benching Anthony Richardson and starting Joe Flacco on Sunday night against the Vikings. That is according to NFL Network. The former first round pick has really struggled this season throwing just four touchdowns, seven INTs and six appearances. Joe Flacco on the flip side is thrown for seven touchdowns with just one pick in four games this season. And the Colts are currently sitting at 500 trailing the Texans for first place in the AFC South by two games. So what does this all mean for your fantasy team? We're going to talk, of course, about this AR situation. Stefan Diggs, our fantasy expert, Dave Richard, here with us to walk us through everything we need to know. First of all, Amanda was just talking about it. She took AR in the fifth round, and in a lot of my drafts, Everybody did, yeah. there was high expectations, right? So if you do still have him at this point, you're dropping him. What are you doing? You're moving on. Okay. The Colts yep. are moving on. Fantasy managers should move on as well. And just think about how many great quarterbacks there are right now in fantasy. I mean, you can go to your waiver wire, and yeah, Flacco is an interesting name to pick <laughs> up off the waiver wire, but Matthew Stafford's out there. And Bo Nix? Bo Nix is out there. So Jameis Winston's out there. Like, you've got options. So it's not uh, – Richardson's the easy choice to make to just cut him and move on. Harder to do in super flex leagues. Harder to do in dynasty leagues. I spent an early pick in a dynasty league on Anthony Richardson. I'm going Dak Prescott the rest of the way there. But I don't, I, I, we need to not only see Anthony Richardson come back, but complete at least half of his passes and maybe throw a few touchdowns as well. He's just way too inconsistent and way too off the mark for the Colts to trust. This was the right move for them to do. And they're, they're using the whole tap out thing, the fact that he, he, he kind of, I don't want to say he quit on a play, but he was too tired. To, to play. I, I think they're using that kind of as an excuse yeah. to get Joe Flacco in there. I think Flacco gives them the better chance to win. So if you're in a regular old fantasy league, a redraft league, no keepers involved, Richardson can be cut. Okay, and it was interesting because Joe Flacco was only rostered in like 8% of well, those sure, leagues, so he, he's, he's been on the bench, right. kind of. Um, so is he <laughs> someone that, you know, we should, if, if Bo Nix isn't there, because in one of my leagues, Bo Nix is, he's sure. off the table and he's been on someone's bench for a long time. Do I immediately go to Joe Flacco? I think if you're looking for somebody for the next several weeks and you don't want to keep making ad drops at the yeah. quarterback position, you'll take Flacco over Jameis. But that's how I'm qualifying it. If it's just for this coming week, I kind of like Jameis a little bit more. And I know that Jameis has a bye next week. Here's the problem with Flacco, and this is kind of a problem with all the Colts. Their schedule after this week, at least their next two games, really, really tough. They've got the Bills. They've got the Jets. That follows the Vikings. The Vikings won't be an easy defense for them to beat up, but it's not... It's not an impossible matchup. I think Joe Flacco is someone that you could use this week. Certainly in a two-quarterback league, a super flex league, you'll use him there. But in a regular 1QB league, I don't know if you're going to prioritize him the same way you would prioritize Stafford or Bo Nix if he's there. But you might have Brock Purdy. You might have started Russell Wilson, and you need a quarterback for this week. Jameis and Flacco is the order I would have them in for week number nine. Okay, what about the rest of this Colts offense when we think of, of course, Michael Pittman? What do we do with him for, for this week with Joe Flacco under center and then long term as well? How do you handle that? Well, first and foremost, let's assume that Joe Flacco will be the quarterback rest of season okay. for the Indianapolis Colts. The only way that changes is if he gets hurt or if he somehow stinks worse than Anthony Richardson, and I don't see that happening. And you mentioned Michael Pittman. I'm going to talk about him in a second, Jacqueline. Okay. Josh Downs in three games with Joe Flacco this year, two that Flacco started, one that he came in against the Steelers, has at least 15.9 PPR points in each. The dude gets a ton of targets, a minimum of eight in three games with Joe Flacco. I think he's going to be the best Colts wide receiver rest of season, and he's out there in about a third of CBS Sports League's so this is somebody that you should prioritize. Put that fab in there. Make him your number one waiver claim. Josh Downs should be that guy. Pittman doesn't even have 15 PPR points in a game with Joe Flacco this year, but that doesn't mean that he won't. I think he's somebody that would follow him if he was out there on the waiver wire. He's probably not. People still stuck with Michael Pittman, at least on fantasy benches, but he's going to be right in that range of a number three wide receiver in full PPR as well, and maybe even a little bit safer in non-PPR leagues. I'll still take downs even in non-PPR, but Pittman's going to make the radar in both of those formats. Listen, it's accurate targets. That's what they need. And the identity of this team might shift a little bit toward Flacco and toward throwing a little bit more. I know that sounds crazy. They've got Jonathan Taylor. Right. But now they can throw. The coaching staff will have confidence in dialing up passing plays, and those passes will be catchable. Those are very important factors that make me like Downs and Pittman moving forward as at least number three wide receivers in the case of Downs, maybe even a number two fantasy wide receiver. Top 
24 ish type of fantasy wide receiver in full PPR. So really quickly before we move on to the other breaking news, I just want to double down on something you said about JT. If we're yeah. going to see more of that more of that passing game, less touches for JT. What does that mean? No, I think you're still going to see plenty of touches for Taylor, and I think we might even see a slight uptick in targets for Jonathan Taylor because Joe Flacco does not run. He is the polar opposite of Anthony Richardson when it comes to rushing, and these types of immobile quarterbacks. Well, they'll check it down a lot more often when things are taken away from them deep downfield. That's good for Jonathan Taylor. Maybe a couple more catches for him. And because defenses have to respect the pass now against Indianapolis, maybe some lighter boxes against Jonathan Taylor. He'll have a pretty good run here. All right. The other breaking news is we have a two for here. We have, of course, yeah. unfortunately, Stephon Diggs is out for this season, um, has a torn ACL. So what does this mean? Because Nico Collins is going to come back at some point, but does that make Tank Dell a must-start wide receiver if you have him on your bench? Dell is going to be in that low-end number two wide receiver range until Nico Collins comes back. He's going to be the number one target getter for Houston in the matchup against the Jets. It's not going to be easy for him. That Jets secondary is pretty good. And I know Tank Dell's fast, and he can and make those splash plays we really just haven't seen it from him much this year in fact his touchdowns and his touchdown opportunities have really been more inside the red zone than they've been outside of the red zone and, and that's a change and that's not something that I think fantasy managers were expecting with Tank Dell you see that he's averaging around five PPR points per game I think if you cut that up and you focus on what he's done lately it's a lot better because there hasn't been Nico Collins and now without Stefan Diggs there you know last week without Stefan Diggs the Texans use multiple guys in the slot. I don't know if they're going to make a decision on either Hutchinson or John Mechie to be that slot guy. Robert Woods playing on the outside while there's no Nico Collins. I, I think this is really bad news for C.J. Stroud, though, because okay. the whole reason why Diggs came to Houston in the first place was to give a second option or even a third option, depending on what Tank Dell was going to do, for C.J. Stroud and to be a good third down guy, a good red zone guy, certainly somebody who played in the slot, and now that's gone. So I know that Nico Collins is going to come back, and that'll lead to some good games for C.J. Stroud, but I just did the rest of season rankings. It's part of the trade chart that I do each week on CBSSports.com. C.J. Stroud's not even in the top 12. Oof. Stafford's ahead of him. That's crazy. I, I, and this was another quarterback that we were taking in that round five range. You could feasibly move on from C.J. Stroud if you wanted to. You don't have to. If you can carry another quarterback, it's a good idea. But tough matchup this week against the Jets. Short week on top of it. And there's no digs and there's no Nico Collins. I cannot start C.J. Stroud with any confidence. I'd rather start, I mean, all four of the quarterbacks that we talked about. Stafford, Nix, uh, Winston. And Flacco, all four out of C.J. Stroud. Of CJ okay, and, and, and if you do have digs and you have to go out and get another wide receiver, who who are you targeting that still could be out As, there Assuming you can't get Josh Downs, yes, obviously. I, you know, <laughs> it, this is going to sound silly, but look to Cleveland. Cedric Tillman and Elijah Moore have gotten a lot of targets and a lot of catches over the last two weeks with Jameis Winston. This is another offense that changed their identity when they changed quarterbacks, and it's really worked out. Right around 16-plus PPR points for Cedric Tillman, Elijah Moore has six catches in each of his last two games. He's the slot guy for Cleveland. And then Carolina after that, you've got Xavier Leggett and Jalen Coker. Those guys are just okay. I don't know if I feel really good about anybody from either of these offenses, but at least with Jameis Winston, you know he's going to throw a lot and he will take chances downfield. That's good for the targets that he throws to. That's Tillman and that's Moore. Um, all right, Dave, you're just like giving breaking news energy because we have some more stuff coming down. We know the NFL trade deadline is in a week and we're already seeing some moves. Panthers trading wide receiver Deontay Johnson to the Ravens. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, oh, I, they I were not right. on my radar for <laughs> yeah. Deontay Johnson. I know. Our Jonathan Jones confirming that news. We were talking about it earlier on the show, and, and someone said, hey, maybe he should go to the Chiefs. We were throwing out some options. But all yeah. in all, he is going to go to the Ravens. So That's, what does that do for you in terms of fantasy for that Ravens offense? Look, I think it makes that Ravens offense, A, harder to handicap for fantasy, and B, harder to defend if you're an NFL defensive coordinator. Now your hands are full. I don't like it at all for Deontay Johnson, to be okay. honest with you, because this isn't a high-volume passing offense to begin with. And Zay Flowers, assuming that he's healthy and everything's right with him, you know, it, it's, it's crazy to me to think that his numbers are going to go away just because Deontay Johnson's there. I think this crushes Deontay Johnson's fantasy value. I, I wouldn't feel good about trusting him as a number three wide receiver. I'll keep him on the bench and see what happens for a couple of weeks. But it's Derrick Henry, it's Lamar Jackson, it's Zay Flowers, and it's Mark Andrews. And I imagine that it's just going to stay that way. I'm, uh, there's got to be some other reason why the Ravens made this move. I hope it's not because of injury. It really just did not make sense to me that they would go and, and get Deontay Johnson other than it makes them tougher to defend. Right. Because now what you'll see is, is way more zone coverage, a lot of single coverage against these guys. Uh, certainly they can't 
put, they can't shift a safety atop of Zay Flowers anymore if Deontay Johnson's on the other side of the field. Um, yeah, just a lot going on, of course, with the, uh, the trade deadline a week away. We have some injuries, a lot of breaking news here. Dave, we certainly appreciate it telling us what this all means for our fantasy team. I know it's a, a lot of moving parts, but we certainly Great. appreciate it, Dave. For more from Dave Richard, Jamie Eisenberg, and the crew, you can hear them on Fantasy Football Today. You can download, follow, listen wherever you get your pods, or you can scan that QR code on your screen.